Let's go. Is John actually bold or is he just wearing some kind of hat on his suit? Something to pull over his head, I'm not sure. It seems like he's naked or he has body paint. But I guess it's just in a kind of nano suit. Um, like they do in Metal Gear. How was his character named? Raiden? Yeah. Okay. Whoa, what the hell was that? Things are getting spooky. And what was that noise? Okay, uh, nothing we can do but just to proceed. Wait, let me try. Can we? The tower. I am authorizing the raw materials containment tag. Yeah, come in. John, thank goodness, I can hear you. You just disappeared. No radio, no PDT. Who the hell was that? Dr. Rodas Milan. Has a special projects. He knew you. It's a big ship. And, um, I'm in a different division to him entirely. I only met him once. A real arsehole. I just want to get my family out of this goddamn place. That's the plan. Okay, so we're back with Thea, and I guess she opened the door from somewhere. Is she really trying to help me, or is she just playing me for her own agenda? I guess we'll find out. Um, so the evil doctor is Dr. Milan. And we can't go back, so we need to go in here. I take it. And this area is flooded. You mentioned earlier that you lost my... Okay, so John got crazy for a minute there about the PDTs. We're in the tower and she opened another door. It took a while though. Okay. From the crew quarters, you should be close to an infirmary with a DNA sequencer. If you get your blood into the sequencer, I can scan the ship for familial DNA. And then we can find your daughter. Then... We can use her DNA to find Ellen. Exactly. Notice. Reserve power facilities are online. Backup systems are now enabled and functioning at benchmark levels. The outside temperature is minus 218 degrees Celsius. That's cold. Uh, so, yeah, my daughter is Ellen. And we already have the blood because I've put my syringe into my body. Some nice epic music is kicking in. To invigorate John's hope for finding Alan. So there are pipes and machinery. A multitude of machines and pipes knitted together lie redundant. We can go two way to the security office and the crew commons. There are some monitors. The screen broadcasts only one channel. An endless storm of static. The static dances across the screen to the tune of hissing. Okay, choices. What to choose first? I guess the one that sits close to me. That's the security office. Let's see how secure it is. Okay, so we have a closed door over here. Two dead bodies. And a motion detector. A motion detection device has been installed above the door. A strong metal door that is closed. Let's see what happens if I try to... Just 
fucking open. <laughs> John is getting a short temper. His patience is drying out. Maybe he's hungry. Portals into life support. The viewing portals look in upon the disturbingly grimy life support control room. And we have here a dead security guard. A crumpled body rests against a slanted bulkhead in a leisurely repose. A uniform indicates that it's a security officer of the law. What do you have for me? For I cut his wrists. He has a PDA and he committed suicide. It's Paul Hutchison. Uh, we start at September, we end in January. That's like four months, almost. Three months. This whole shift change thing is kind of strange. Putting Ronald in security when he's obviously not equipped strikes me as irresponsible. Oh well, I'm sure I can compensate. A notice went out telling us to follow the new security guidelines this evening. I wonder what happened. It's only a few extra doors to lock, as far as I'm concerned. Easy enough. Food supplies are stalled and people are getting nervous. Someone's been distilling alcohol despite the fact that express authorization is required to even possess it. Ivan was describing the concept of moonshine to Ronald, and the guy asked how moonshine could exist if we're in a spaceship so far away from the moon. Haha, -ha, I swear to God, if aliens board a ship and pick us off one by one or something, I want to see Ronald go first. I really want to do something about this alcohol situation. It's my duty to ensure that the Groom Lake's crew is secure and that important research isn't interfered with. At least I'd like to believe so. These clowns don't share the sentiment. Okay, so he's trying to battle the evils on the ship. The ass end of the ship just started exploding and jolted everything that wasn't bolted down. There's a goddamn pan stuck in the wall next to me. I can only imagine all the people injured right now, but can't leave on account of the lockdown. Lockdown or not, station B is fucked. So getting the medical isn't happening. Someone suggested that we could use the specimen transport back, but that's a shady as... That's a weird sentence. Uh, there's no leaving the security center now. Staring at Ronald's lifeless body is a fucking superior alternative to being ripped apart by whatever's outside. I hear screams. They're distant and muffled. Silence. 24 hours of silence. Not a scream, not a footstep. Still not a word from Ivan. The guy looked away from the atmosphere control room just before Ronald pulled the plug. I got bored and read Ronald's file. He had a lot of stuff running really deep. Maybe he wasn't ignorant after all. Okay. The last one. And that's it for the water. Ivan refused to drink anything but moonshine. I tried my best to get him to have water. Stubborn bastard wouldn't hear it. He hasn't moved in a while. And then he committed suicide. He saw no hope. Anymore. Okay, I guess did this is Ivan? Security guard seems to have died while sitting in this cushioned recliner. It tilts back at an angle that will hold the body for a long long time. Yeah, he was kinda drunk on moonshine? Or high? Can you... Yep, it's Ivan Serato, and he has a lot of notices. That ranges for September till January. Okay, here we go. This new guy, Anderson, is really something. Five minutes in the door and he's already asking what all the computers do. I like it. He's inquisitive, just like my boy back home. I'm glad he got put here in the, in the shift change. But I'm disappointed that neither of these two are ladies. I could use some female company. Ooh. I like how these PDAs are personalized. You can see some kind of trees for him. Uh, okay, maybe Anderson is a little more confused and inquisitive, but his heart is in the right place. I can respect that. But Sarge? How in the hell did the boy get Sarge from Serato? Paul is just plain obnoxious. Food's not coming for a while. Fortunately, somebody's been making moonshine. It's not the white oak whiskey from back home. But you don't come across much liquor in space. Looks like I'll be moderating the supply, so to speak. Hodgson just tried to arrest someone. Prick. So he's starting to hate him. Rations are in. Good thing too. The liquor wasn't keeping the crew at bay like it used to. This entire ship smells like shit. 
It's always been bad, but it gets worse every day. It's even a different type of shit every once in a while. Beyond me. Ugh. Groom Lake is on lockdown. Streamers, power outages and several injured. Some guys left three days ago to repair a tram station. I haven't heard from them since. I can only fear the worst. And I don't want to wait to figure out what's been going on around here. Paul and I have agreed on the solution. But Anderson isn't grasping it. I don't expect him to. Uh, who's Anderson then? Hodgson? Anderson? Okay. I knew Anderson would have trouble coping. I knew he wouldn't understand. At least he went easier than we will. Okay, so he died? Maybe I've met him before, I just don't remember. I saw so much... He saw so much in this short life. There just wasn't room for more. He'll never have a funeral. Nobody back home is going to think of him and wonder what happened. I think Paul and I are the only people on the ship who knew him by name. Maybe that Samantha girl he was talking about still remembers him. Her dog could be named after him. Or maybe he picked her a flower and she tucked it into a book. I never did read much, but right now I'd love to be holding a book. Poe would work. He's the only author I know by name. Edgar Allan Poe, of course. And another long post. I haven't talked to Paul. He thinks I'm drinking, but I'm too preoccupied with Anderson for that. I figure I'm writing this for a reason. What if nobody ever reads it? What if this ship just drifts to the edge of the universe, dead and empty? If you exist, if you somehow stumble upon this, remember Anderson for me. He reminds me so much of how my son used to be. If you don't do it, nobody will. I don't beg. I never beg. But if you're a decent human, you'll know what you have to. Remember Anderson. Okay. Barely awake. Typing is an effort. Moonshine is not water. Hodgson has last... had last word? Okay. So I guess that was it for Serato. Can we... Uh, yeah. Uh, we have security cameras over here. This bank of monitors was designed to display the view from various security cameras around the facility. Um, there's a computer terminal, another terminal that might have provided access to advanced system functions if it weren't hopelessly powered down. And there's another computer terminal. Can I try to do something with this first? Uh, come on. Alright, so we have four cameras. Uh, one that's set in the annex. I can see trees or plants growing. Uh, so there is a pirate head over here. Static and... What is this? Bucket of... M? Well, I can't do anything with it. So let's try the uh, terminal. Okay, so we have a security terminal. Oh, that isn't clickable. Uh, crew quarter security logs. There are five of them. Alcohol is being manufactured and distributed aboard the Groom Lake. Security has opted to take an approach of non-intervention as it affects on morale. Will likely prevent theft and potential riots associated with the limited rations. However, security will regularly confiscate quantities of alcohol to moderate supply. And then we have... Rations have arrived and been distrib distributed. Very few reported or evidential cases of theft. This can likely be attributed to the morale increase speculated as a result of the distribution of alcohol. That was in November, now we start in December. Specimen Samantha received for transport to Laboratory 18. This specimen from the cloning vets is contained in an iron lung. Transport needs to be arranged quickly. Specimen is scraping against the inside of the containment unit. Then December 19. Tremors have struck the Groom Lake. Power outages and severe injuries have been reported. Lockdown is in effect. And then it's Christmas. Four crew members have been reported missing while attempting to restore a tram station to working order. I thought it were three? To prevent further loss or injury, the corridor has been sealed and flooded with highly corrosive gas. 
Uh, and there's an uh, atmosphere control axis. Uh, let's activate the motion detector. Hmm. I'll need to figure something out here. Okay, so we need to have motion over here. Can we do it with a drill? I can't see it working like that. I don't think we can figure this out in this room, so let's try the other one, because there's still a room we can inspect. It's the crew commons. It's a gloomy doorway to the crew room. Once we know where Becker is, how can I get to her? There is another tram through the crew quarters. Once we know where you're going, we'll move forward from there. <laughs> yeah, I figure he doesn't like trams anymore after that derailment. God forgive us. Mountain images, a long landscape of a serene mountainscape intended to provide a sense of calm and perspective. Can see him smile. A uh, frosted glass door. This especially large frosted glass door is coated with the dirt of neglect. Um, and there's another dead body. A body lies slumped against the entrance bulkhead with its head hanging forward. It's almost possible to imagine him having a nap during a long shift. Is that Anderson? What the hell? Okay. I wish I could do something. Something. No, it's Dr. Rick Graham, and he said, "Help me." Uh, there we go. September twenty-seven. Seven. I'm getting sick of this bumps and scrapes bullshit. I didn't get this degree just so that I could stitch idiots up when they accidentally stabbed themselves with a pen. I want to do fun experiments. Is that too much to ask? It's not like I want to be a mad scientist and shoo new arms onto people or anything. Although human spiders would be cool. It's a miracle. Security somehow ended up passing a container from one of the cloning vets onto me. It's labeled Samantha. They understand it's to be transferred to lab 18, right? Oh well, no reason I can't observe it for a while, right? I'll have my loyal assistant, Miriam, make up some good excuses for me. This creature is marvelous. The notes included don't say much, but I'm pretty sure that she didn't have a fully formed spine when they packaged this girl up. It describes her as being just a tail. There are some other bones as well, but I didn't major in monster anatomy. I wish I had though. You can't make this shit up. Then two days later, this fucker grew eyes. I mean it. She did not have these the last time I checked. They are rudimentary, sure, but they're just grew. They follow me around. At this point I'm going to take credit for Samantha entirely. I mean, they can provide that there was anything more than some stem cells in that container the last they saw it, right? From now on Samantha is mine. I can't wait to see what she turns into. Really? Lab 18 is definitely, definitely getting suspicious and impatient. I'm running out of excuses for why I haven't transferred Samantha yet. I need Miriam to stall a bit longer. I read her PDA so I know she wants to turn me in. She wants my job. Fortunately, I have video of her screaming, the guys from the lab. All of them. So there's my job security. Oh, screwing. Screwing, oh! Like a sex tape. Um, and then December 19, this, is, this just got serious. The tremors knocked me over the counter and I twisted a muscle in my knee. It's going to be a long lockdown spent bandaging people up without any access to the full medical wing. December 21, Samantha isn't mine anymore, some other poor fool can take responsibility for this one. Okay, so he doesn't like Samantha anymore at this point. Then the last one, I heard shrill screams coming from the entertainment area. The first and last time I performed surgery, the patient woke up and started screaming her head off. Something about seeing your own exposed ribs really bothers me. Anyway, these screams were like that, only more intense. There are screams of the dying. I've locked the emergency bulkhead. No sign of Miriam. And that's it for this poor guy. 